All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy, Mick Thomas here. How are you? It's great to be back. Great to be back. So sorry. So sorry I missed a week. I do apologize. Uh, I'm just looking at my dog. Oh, it's just, it looked like he had a flat head. Um, you can see for yourself there. If you're watching on YouTube where you can get this episode on YouTube, you you thousands of lovely people, you. On YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you want to check out my other podcast. With my good friend Corey Brooks, the Manxiety Show, which is also available wherever you get your podcasts from. Um, also, this Wednesday, Wednesday the 11th, Los Angeles people, keep messaging me. When are you coming out to LA? When are you coming out to LA? I'm coming. I'm finally coming out to LA on this Wednesday. I'll be at the Hollywood Improv. The Hollywood Improv. I'm going to put my name on a star totally illegally by the way and unwarranted and on like a lot of them i suppose undeserved um and then may 27 28th i am headlining governors and long island new york also there's an interesting concept shut up dog there's also an interesting concept <laughs> after hardly i don't really talk to my dog like that by the way um on may 26th before that uh i go chris roach local, local comedy Long Island local guy uh, put together a great show called The Yellow Pad where a bunch of comedians go up with, but they're only headliners, right? We go up with our notepads and we try to run just new material to let the crowd see how it goes, see what a real bomb looks like, what it's like to structure a joke, and we try to do it on stage. It's kind of like peeping behind the curtain a little bit. Phenomenal lineup. Myself, Chris Roach, Keith Anthony, uh, and Sean Donnelly. Just worth the admission alone there just for the last few people. Um... Check it out. Governor's Comedy Club 26. I'll be headlining 27, 28. And also, the, this Saturday... Is it this Saturday night? This Saturday night, I'll be at the Comic Strip, which is the 16th, I believe. No, no. No, it's the 14th. I'll be at the Comic Strip, because the 15th, I have to go to some Comic-Con thing with my daughter doing some cosplay thing. I ain't, I ain't dressing up, of course. But anyway, enough of all that shit. Let's get into it. Sorry I missed last week. I was in South Carolina and I just didn't want to uh, have to rush an episode. I didn't want to try to do an episode down there. Again, that's my dog in the background. I don't know what's going on. If you're watching on YouTube, you can actually see him. But uh, his name is Benny. And he's a good dog. And uh, well, before we went for South Carolina, we actually had to house this fella. We had to house him. Uh, some, And there's a weird thing. When you house something... A dog, like I understand the person who did it was a nice person, right? She's a lonely woman who just looks after dogs in her spare time. I don't know what she does. I don't know what she does, but she charged me money to watch my dog uh, whilst I, you know, went on vacation to South Carolina. But uh, it was the vet. Like, vets. I have a problem with vets, right? I think, I think it's a scam. Uh, you all right there, buddy? Lie down there. Go on, lie down. Lie down. Doesn't listen to the word I say. Doesn't listen to the word I say. Um, I think vets are a scam. I'm be, if I'm to be hundred percent honest with you, because we don't know what's going on. I think I think um, vets and uh, mechanics fall under the same fall under the same category, right? Because they just tell you shit that you don't know. You can't protest about. You can't protest about it, right? If the mechanic comes up to you and says, "Oh, you're, you know, you have a problem with your." I don't know, jack -o', jack o' lantern preventer. You're gonna go, oh no, my not my jack o' lantern preventer. I hope, ooh, can we get that fixed? And he'll go, yeah, I'll fix that for you, no problem. And you got no choice but to go along with this fucking thing. You know what I mean? And they, 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 they try to sell you, they call you back up when you just brought it in for an oil change and they'll call you up. And that's what vets are like. They'll call you up and try to sell you shit. The vet's like, all right, well, we gotta give him his shots now. Like, what kind of shots? Well, he needs he needs his shot. Um... But what kind of shot? Well, you know, does he? Did your dog go near squirrels? Yes, the squirrels are everywhere. Like, well, your daddy definitely needs this shot. Like, why? He's not fucking him. He doesn't need any STD shot from a squirrel. Yeah, but if there's squirrel, like, we got no. Your dog feet seems depressed today. Does he? Yeah, yeah. You gotta take this medication. So we give him the shot, and the only reason we gave him a shot, and I caved. I didn't want to do it, but the only reason we did it because you know we're dropping it off at a housed place someone's house to mind the dog and then we don't want to drop the dog off and then all of a sudden it's like well did your dog have its squirrel shot yet i got i don't know i got fuck it give him the squirrel shot because i don't want my trip to south carolina getting fucked up 
But we do. We don't question vets ever. We never look at vets do great things, by the way. They do great things when your animal gets hit by a car or you're just generally not feeling well. So I ain't shitting on vets, but I just do think it's a scam. Right? And some people will argue with you. Oh, being a vet is a lot harder than a doctor. Is it? Is it really? How, you have to know about all animals. No, you don't. You do, Week one, birds. You know what I mean? They all, all birds are the same. Like, all, I got, a, got a bad heart, stomach. Here's his eyes. There's the wings. There's his feet. That's it. That's bird. Birds are done. Cats and dogs stop acting like they're two different entities. And then a horse... Horses are just bigger dogs. Cows, sheep, they're all bigger cats. So let's be honest. Stop acting like they're better than doctors. Now we know vets are doctors. But you know what I mean. Your general doctor, like ER, you know, when you're calling, you know, you go, to, you go see your doctor and explain to you what a fucking real doctor is. But people say, oh, vets have a heart. Like, they don't. Stop it. You just have that. You've got attractive girls who like animals working in scrubs, working for you. Your life ain't tough. Someone brings in a chameleon lizards all under the same category you know what i mean so you got to stop like every day you got to fucking you go oh well he spends one year they got to do a get a whole bachelor's degree in iguanas they don't vets are just they're like fortune tellers you know what i mean i, I believe they're like fortune tellers and clairvoyants did you ever go to a clairvoyant i didn't because i'm kind of intelligent i think you know oh yeah we're talking to your cousin up here does anybody here lose a family member? Everyone's lost a family member. Your ancestors, you didn't, where did you come from? Everyone's lost a family member. Of course you're going to say yes. And that's what vets are to me. And again, I'm not taking away if your dog gets hit by a car and he's only got, he's missing his two back legs now because some truck drove over and he's just crawling along, dragging himself along. Vets going to soap the wound and maybe put wheels on the back of him. Don't know. You know, but I just think vets are scams. So I went down to South Carolina. We, we went down, took the family down to South Carolina to see more family. That was, it was great. I love South Carolina with the possibility of moving there one day uh, to see where this comedy thing takes me. It's very possible I would be moving to South Carolina. Um, you know, it's just, it's just nice. Like I like the weather. I like the people. I like, I like, uh, although we, 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 did, we were kind of, you know when you get a group of people and nobody can decide where to eat? So we were all out one day trying to get some stuff done and shop for Mother's Day. Um, you know, for for my mother-in-law. And, you know, and then at the end of that, everyone was kind of getting hangry. So we just found a random, like, I think it was like a Chili's. Now, usually the Southern hospitality is is really nice. Like, you go pick up food and it's like, how, how can I help y'alls? How's y'alls day going? Like, just... Your grammar's terrible, love, but it's adorable, right? It's adorable. You know when you hear, like, someone on Long Island will say, but, like, oh, you guys, the worst grammar ever. And it's disgusting, and it sounds ignorant, and it sounds just blech. But when you go, like, down south, and they go, you know, how's y'all's day going? That's adorable. It's adorable. How's y'all's day? Oh, fucking, you wouldn't want to hear that every day. Who wouldn't want, like, it's just that old southern hospitality takes you back to just a simpler time right uh, a bit too simple though when it came to slaves and stuff but we're not i didn't mean that aspect of being back then down the south but um i just i don't know i like that slow pace of living but we did go to that anyway so we went to that one restaurant i was saying about when everyone was hungry and walk in was an older woman like at a chili's and she was uh she was the woman who seats you i guess and she walked in she would run ragged right and usually like you walk in the hospitality and you go like how how long is the wait and they go like 15 minutes and like someone who will overhear sitting at a table with a family they're like 15 minutes oh no come on baby everybody let's get up let them have our table like that's usually the, the southern hospitality you see but this one woman was like she just looked around the room like you know they sometimes you go into a restaurant that'll have a computer and they'll go down a clipboard maybe if they don't have a computer and they'll just go let me just touch the screen every second see if i can get my face a bit lighter there you go um they'll go down the screen and they'll like they'll or the piece of paper and they'll just go oh uh bobby about 40 minute wait 40 minute wait so we walked in and this woman was just run ragged little old tiny southern lady and she wasn't having any of it and i was like hey how many people do you have? we have like we have eight in a high chair that's a fucking nightmare and she goes uh and she just looked around the room that's all she did like she just looked around the room she went to no clipboard no computer she looked around and she went, ah about an hour like she just fucking estimated and i was like ah what are you doing with all this many people like she was mad at me 
that I showed up with all these people to eat in her establishment. And I was like, oh, well, there's no Southern holiday. Because it was always like, how can I help you? How can I help you? And like I said, those people at other tables would just get up and offer up their seat for you. Well, you can't wait that long. That's ridiculous. Come on, come on. Take our seat. Take our seat. Hey, finish off our fries. This woman wasn't having it. Love the South. Love it. Love that there's alligators in my pond in the backyard. That was that was new. Right? It's always nice to have that you can't let your kids go play in the backyard in fear of an alligator swallowing them. But I, I, all joking aside, though, like that's fascinating to me. You know, that really, really is fascinating to me that when you get up and you see, like you open your back window and there's a nice pond with fish in it and turtles and you're talking about like 15 feet away from you, then there's a there's a four foot alligator just sitting there. You're like, yeah, let's send the kids out. Off you go, guys. Come play with that dinosaur. Legit dinosaur. We watch Jurassic Park and we laugh. This is a legit dinosaur. And I genuinely love that. I genuinely love that interaction with that kind of... Because when you come from Ireland, what do you have? Dogs, cats, sheep. That's it. That's all. That's the only wildlife you have. Ginger squirrels. Ginger squirrel. Nobody likes a ginger in Ireland. And a ginger squirrel. And uh, so when I get here, I see possums and raccoons and, and hawks and armadillos down south. Armadillos and fucking alligators. Oh, amazing amazing wildlife what do you have here dogs and everyone knows the breed. that's the thing about dogs everyone knows the breed like you know what i mean like i'm like that with cars what type of car is it i don't know i don't fucking know it's a big one that's it it's a truck it's like the one in it's a van or so like that's it. i don't know maker models i don't know the makes or models of dogs either people do that and they're obsessive like oh what kind of dog do you have oh she's a labra smittle and they go oh they're beautiful like i don't fucking know anything i know rottweiler which I was wrong, by the way. Like I thought Rottweilers were the big fat-headed ones. Or, and then you also get skinny Rottweiler. Like, I thought a Rottweiler was, you know what I mean? The fat-headed things. And I know German Shepherd. Alsatians are called in Ireland because it's politically incorrect to call them a German Shepherd. Yeah, and that was... that. You know, I'm obsessed with it. I don't know. I don't get dog names. I don't fucking know any dog names. A golden, I know a Golden Retriever. But people are obsessed with dog names. Dog breeds. Makes and models. So we got alligators in the backyard, and I just, I just like it. I, I like it. And when you get down south, you get to deal with, with the south people, you know, like the south, like that's where you go. And I'm not political, as you've known. I've stated this a hundred times. I never picked a side, left or right, and um, ever, ever picked a side, left or right. I have picked, I have made fun of, and I've agreed with different sides, um, but I, I, I'm not political in any way. But when you go down south, you do meet them. Right, you do meet them, and I don't even know if it's politics. It's really that America, right? You really meet the America guy. We're the the guys that make up the military, like the real fucking military. You know what I mean? Not the not 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 the guys at Long Island, just the fucking military, the real guys who've been playing with guns since they were three, shooting fucking squirrels out of trees, right? Praying for this day. They put up posts on social media. So my brother-in-law, I guess, is is one of those guys. And, and, and I love him and all that stuff. But I kind of like to poke fun of him because he, he posts, like, he, he's very America. And, it, it, you know, there was one post he posted up, I guess, whatever was going on about um, how how they're treating kids. And he's, you know, good for him, man. He, he picked a side. He picked a stance. He, he believes that things are not going great for kids right now in America. And he made a stance. But his stance was very vague. The stance wasn't, we're talking about this over dinner. The stance was something like he posted, um, we're taking back this country for our children. We ride at dawn. Now, you know those guys, we ride at dawn guys, have you seen them? They're usually on TikTok or, or Instagram. I mean, Instagram might not send you down that algorithm, but TikTok certainly will. We'll send you, give you a peep at the other side. And it's like, I, 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 always, I was always confused with that statement. We ride at dawn. That was it. We're taking back the country. I'm like, all right, well, wh where do we meet? Do we, are we meeting down at, at the Applebee's, the Chili's? Are we meeting at Walmart? Is there a parking lot? Do we bring our own food? How long will we be gone for? What should I wear? Do you know what I mean? Like we write it, to, when is dawn exactly? What time is dawn? Does my alarm clock have a dawn setting? 
I'm just, you need to be more more construct more more specific with your details, please. Print a flyer. Don't just say that vague thing. We write at dawn. You're not telling us where we're meeting. We're not telling us what to bring. And you're not telling me exactly what time dawn is. I don't like maybe I'll go with you. Maybe I'll go with you. I want to help the kids. I really do. Everyone knows McThomas is a charitable person. Very charitable person. I don't brag about it. Just be more specific. That's all I'm saying. But we will. I'll write it down with you. When is dawn? What am I bringing? And where are we meeting? That's it. Bring my own lunch. Are you providing snacks? Do I have to set my DVR for my shows? Will I be back in time? I need to know these things. I need to know these things. All right? That's all I'm saying. I was down there, right? And I, I, I just saw something. Now, we... I work out like a maniac, right? And it's never out of, uh, it's never out of um, prima donna reasons. I'm never out there sculpting much. I get this fucking arm thing to look like this. I want to get, I want to get that six. If I can get that V, that V that points down to my cock. What's that called? The happy trail or something? Not the happy trail. The happy trail is the hair, isn't it? Like just, I don't know what it's called, but that thing that points to my penis. Like I want to get that thing. I've never worked out really for that image. I've always worked out because I was fighting in kickboxing, fighting in boxing. Uh, I really work out as hard because I suffer from like, you know, like like real crippling depression. Uh, hence running the 100 miles last year because training for that really helped me mentally because, you know, you exhaust yourself to the point where depression, you just... Like, I, I really think there's a quote here and I Google it and I can't find it and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to copyright it, I think, or make a t-shirt of it. But it's like, you can't outrun depression, but you can make it hard to catch you. Uh, and that that's true. Like, you would work out, and all of a sudden, there'd be a knock at the door. It's like, it's depression. Like, <laughs> sorry, I was, I can't keep, whew. what are you doing, watching the show, enjoying yourself? Having a, all right, let me fix that then. And that's what, that's why I would do it, right? I would work out as hard. But when I was down there, I saw, I saw this uh, really obese person right and like oh here he goes no no it's not that that he, he's having a go again no it's trust me it's not one of those things when i see an obese person like that right i secretly am envious of him like man what's what must it be like to just fucking like give up like i'm si i'm not being a dick right now i do this is not satire this is not me being being fucking ironic this is not me being sarcastic i'm genuine when i see a guy i'm like i fucking wish once in a while, like, I give up. Like, go for a month of just not fucking working out ever. I wish I didn't need it for up here. You know? Not working out. Not ever having to go to the fucking gym. Not having to put my food on a scale to count my macros. Not ever, you know, not taking the cookie when I wanted to take the cookie. You know, I just, like, or if it's Tuesday and you get a pizza... Like, what must that feel like? I'm, I'm so... And then sometimes you'll see a couple. You'll see two of them and you go, you found somebody as well? And not only that, but she's just like you. Just the, like the fact that you don't have to impress her in any way. You don't have to go to the gym and like, fuck, if I don't fucking work out now, she's going to leave me. If I don't get... Oh, she, I, I, she's looking at fucking Henry Cavill, who's Superman, right? With his shirt off, getting into a fucking bathtub flooding the fucking apartment did you ever see that in superman he gets into the tub with lois lane with his clothes on ha 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 and the water spills everywhere and she's watching it going isn't that sexy but if i fucking did it if i got in the tub and flooded the water you would hear about it for fucking weeks but remember the time you flooded the fucking house because you thought it'd be cute to get in the water with your fucking clothes on so you can see those you know and, I, and you found someone like i'm so jealous when i see a big fucking you don't even have to impress her you don't even have to come home and work on your chest. Like, you know what I mean? Monday is chest day and you're sitting at home and you're both watching fucking whatever you want and you're eating whatever the f And I, I, I just, when I see a couple like that, I get so envious. I do. And again, I'm not being a dick. This is not, it's not satire, I promise you. A lot of my stuff in the last few episodes, most episodes is satire. I don't mean the shit, the evil shit I say. But I see these... These people, I go, I'm fucking so jealous. 
just to sit there and you found someone and you can go through Netflix and you can, you know, you know what I mean? And you get up and, and if you, you just finish ice cream before dinner, which is on the way, you're eating ice cream while fucking Uber Eats is on the way to you. And then you're, you're, you're going to eat your fucking food from Uber Eats, like some big pizza two for one. And then you're going to, after that, you're going to have fucking barbecue potato flavor chips, potato chips. Or sweet, or sour cream and onion. Maybe, maybe, what are those Cheetos? The big fat ones. And for me, that it's chest day. You know what I mean? I fucking envy you. I envy you. I wish my wires were not loose. Just so I could just once, just fucking give up and have the time. Because you look like you're having a great time. And you find someone. And when you fuck, you don't even have to hope the light doesn't catch you in a weird angle. Because you don't care. You look like you. She looks like her. You're both attracted to each other. You're both fantasizing about someone different anyway. In your head. I fucking... I see those people down South... I saw them in South Carolina, man. I was like, I want... Like, oh, it would be so nice to genuinely not care. And that's what mental illness does to you. That's what mental... And people say to you, what's mental illness like? It's like that. It's like wanting to give up, but you fucking can't. It messes with you. Here's what me- here's what happened to me the other day, right? And I don't know if this happened to anybody else. Send me a message on YouTube. Anyone give anyone give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down. Put it in the comments if this has ever happened to you before. I was driving, I had to go eight miles. Eight miles I had to drive the other day, right? To my destination. On the on the windshield of my car was a spider. A spider was on the windshield of the car, and I thought, when I drive, he'll go phoom, fly right off. He stayed on for the full eight miles. And when I pull into the parking lot of my destination, he fell off. This is what depression does. All I could think about now was how much have I ruined this spider's life? Right? His family are going to be worried sick about him. He fucking doesn't... He's going to be a stranger in a new town. He's not going to know where anything is. All the predators come from different angles. Like, and this haunted me for days. For days haunted me and that's what that's what depression is that if you don't suffer from like from crippling depression that's what it is so when i go down to south carolina and i see those people i go fucking i love you and i wish i envy you mick thomas legit envies you and people think like ah you're just a prima donna you work out because you want to look good no one does that no one spends two hours in a gym a day no one runs fucking five miles a day Unless you want to look good. I trust me. If I don't. The monsters will get my head. That's what. That's the way I am. That's what crippling depression is. And that's why. I fucking work out so hard. So when I see those people. I love them. And I'm, I'm truly. Like I'm going to LA this week. And it's all fucking. I was in LA. Before. I've been there. I've been the whole Hollywood thing. Uh, I've been around the industry. Right. The industry people. The gorgeous people. And it looks exhausting. Just to see them. Everything is like jaw bones and fucking perfect jaw lines and abs you can see through their shirts. You know what I mean? And it, that, that to me, I don't envy that. I see that body and I'm like, I don't want it. I want the fucking soft guy that I saw in South Carolina. The guy who found someone to be soft and cuddly and jelly with. That's the person I want. Speaking of LA, go see me there. The improv, the Hollywood improv. On the, on the, what am I say? On the twelfth, this Wednesday night, which will be the thirteenth, the thirteenth, go see me. I gotta fly out tomorrow. Uh, I am sorry again, guys, for not dropping an episode last week, but here it is, and it's free. So why do I feel bad? Um, also, check out my other podcast, The Manxiety Show, available wherever you get your podcast. If you like this one, give me a thumbs up. There's enough of you out there. Give me a thumbs down. Comment to me on my... on my. Uh, I'm killing it on TikTok, Mick Thomas Comedy. I'm fighting with people all day long, people who don't understand jokes. Come over there, check out. Defend me. Defend my honor on TikTok, please. When people are attacking me, go, it's only a joke, asshole. I would love to have you. You're thousands of listeners. Thousands of listeners. Please jump on, defend me. Uh, if you want to send me a message, I'm on Instagram, Mick Thomas Comedy. Twitter, maybe I'll go back. Maybe I'll go back now that Elon's on there. That's not the reason. That's dumb. I'm not going back to Twitter, and I'm not going back. I might go back to Twitter. I'm not going back to Facebook, but that's definitely dead. But uh, I'm Governor's 26th. I'm doing the Yellow Patch Show with Chris Roach. 
Sean Donnelly and fucking Keith Anthony. And then I'm going to the 27th and the 28th. I am headlining there. And this Saturday night, I will be at the Comic Strip. The Comic Strip uh, on the Upper East Side, 82nd and 2nd. My favorite club. Come on out and see me do it out there. Thanks so much for listening, liking, subscribing, sharing. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for, for, for listening, coming back. Lovely to have you back. It's lovely to be back. It's lovely to be back. Uh, and as always, wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. Good luck. Good luck to you.